Coming up on Sailing Sweet Ruka. We reinstall the carbon fiber mast and put it back in the boat. The mainsail goes back on the boom. We slide the rudder in and bolt together the autopilot and steering system. Stay tuned as we put the boat back in the water and head offshore. Don't miss the end where we're going to give you updates on how all of these boat improvements have held up over 4,000 miles on our way to the West Indies. Sweet Ruka here, and we've taken out the rudder bearings. The rudder bearings are one of the most important parts of a boat and sailing and safety. First, we have our old lower rudder bearing and the old upper rudder bearing. This one's still pretty good, but it does have some spots where it gets hung up. Oh, right there. We took these out because they have a little bit of play in them, which means they they seize up a little bit where they shouldn't. This one, you can tell I'm having some tough, a tough time turning it, and we want this to be able to, to move fairly easy, and it's, it's quite rough. This is the new lower bearing. You can see the bearings inside there, kind of like little tubes, and those will, will spin really nice for us. Here is the new upper rudder bearing, and it actually has this like self-correcting, self-writing. You can see I'm moving the white piece inside a little bit, and uh, those are gonna spin uh, real nice for us and go on the rudder shaft here. Sir, Goop's a lot. Goop is nice and warm. The installation of the rudder bearings required lots of goop and sealant, and it was so cold that we had to heat up the goop so that it could cure. Mike Beasley, head of Beasley Marine, whom has circumnavigated the globe on the record-breaking catamaran PlayStation, helped us tremendously when it came to installing the rudder bearings inside the boat, giving us tips and even doing some gooping himself along the way. Once the bearings were in, it was time to reinstall the rudder. The boat was to be raised up and realigned, however, we had to be careful as the wind generator came close to the crane. Dental? <laughs> Claire! this does is keeps water uh, out of the boat. So it's a seal that goes around the rudder shaft. The rudder shaft can turn inside of it. Early grease. I don't really want to press them in there. trying to do here is like I want this to seal but I also don't want this going on our I don't want it squeezing out It was time to reassemble the steering shaft and rudder quadrant. All of these pieces are like a puzzle, and when connected together, they allow the steering wheel to turn the rudder.
The rudder was in, the mini steering components were finally attached, and it was time to reconnect and test out the autopilot. Okay, go ahead and turn the autopilot on. And let's see if it works. Put on. All right, press auto. And he looks good, huh? Happy? Good stay, Roxy. Stay. Stay. He's like not even afraid of us. He's looking now though. He's like. Good. I wouldn't get any closer. Next, the shower headliner was removed and the ceiling painted for a nice clean finish. Cutting the carbon fiber rig is a tricky job, so we entrusted the experienced team at Beasley Marine to handle this important composite work. Mike and Tyler from Beasley, along with Jabins and Curtis, teamed up to get the mass back in the boat quickly as the clock was ticking to our launch deadline. Pass it down your wires. You lined up pretty good down there? Can you teach it on the wiring one? You lined up pretty good? I'm on the wiring. Do it top the port? Yep, how's that? Like it? Coming down. What do you need? You want the butt forward? Something on your half. Right there? Yeah. Say when. We're going back in the water. Roxy, are you excited? It's not easy filming and holding on to Roxy. After a month in the cold November boatyard, the boat was back in the water and it was time to put the sail back on the boom, including battens and reef lines, before we could push off and head towards warmer climate. Roxy the Sailing Dog couldn't help but try to be involved in every boat project we tackled. Thanks for watching the video so far. Now it's time to talk a little bit more in depth 
about the modifications that we made and our experience with them over the last 4,000 miles and one year of sailing. First up on the list, I want to hear Curtis's thoughts about our carbon fiber mast and the additional inner force day that we added. What do you have to say, Curtis? I love the carbon fiber rig. It's been perfectly strong and has been excellent for us in cruising. I also think that its lighter weight is a little bit better at anchor where it helps uh, keep the center of gravity lower so that we're not rolling as much. The inner force day we haven't really used as much as we've wanted to. It works very, very well, and I think it's an important safety factor when going offshore. Now it's time to ask Kate what she thinks about the updates that we did to our rudder bearings and all the work we did to our steering system. Well, we got a little concerned as we were approaching Annapolis that we felt like we could just feel a little bit of shake or play in the wheel, and so uh, replacing the rudder bearings was uh, something that we had the opportunity to do when we pulled the boat out and we just feel like it's so much more sturdier and it's just safer and we're not worried about the rudder while we're offshore in strong seas and strong winds so just gives us that peace of mind that the rudder is just solidly in there and our steering system we checked it all out and cleaned it up and we're good to go now on to the next thing our shower we pulled the shower headliner out kate what do you think about that modification well, we found a lot of gross mold um, behind the shower liner. There's a lot of moisture in the shower, obviously, so it seems kind of silly to have a headliner in the shower anyway, so we decided to pull it out, paint the ceiling white, and start fresh. It's all cleaned up, and if Curtis could have his way, he'd probably tear the headliners out of the whole boat to save weight. But we're a cruising boat, so we keep it looking nice as best we can. <laughs> yeah, we've got to keep it looking nice. The paint on the shower ceiling looks good, and it actually gives me maybe another inch or two of headroom in the shower, which is really important on my end. On top of all these improvements, we also added a third reef to our mainsail. Tell us about that, Curtis. Well, I think going offshore, the third reef is very important. Inshore, the two reefs in the mainsail were just fine, but we really wanted to stretch our legs and go far, far offshore, hundreds or thousands of miles. So I think it's important to have a safety factor to be able to shorten sail when needed. Last but not least, some major improvements we made to the boat include our batteries and electric system. So Curtis is going to tell us a lot that we did with that. Here we go. We reconfigured the whole electrical system for lithium batteries. We now have 600 amp hours of uh, LiPo 4 batteries, and we also have 750 watts of solar. And we've been finding that we don't have to run the engine, and it's very, very good. We also put all of our batteries into one location. So now they're all together, which is better for weight of the boat and also better for the battery life as a whole, um, instead of being spread throughout the boat in different compartments. It's easier for us to reach them if we need to, and we even have better storage now that some of the batteries are moved out of those other compartments. Well done, babe. Heck yeah. <laughs> How do you like the solar setup and being able to kind of go off grid? How does it work for you for cooking, computer use, uh, and everything else that goes into it? Well, we use the solar panels to charge our computers for work, and we use the solar panels for the refrigeration and also our lights and fans. And when it's hot, we really love our fans and we really love our cold food and water. So um, being able to stay outside of Marina and use our solar power so that we can eat and work and do all the things that we love to do really makes life super great on the boat. So super happy to have more solar, the more solar, the better, the more we can do. I agree. The more solar, the better. And for me, it means less engine hours, which means less oil changes and less engine maintenance, which makes Curtis a very happy camper. <laughs> all right. Anything else? I think that's it. If you like hearing more about the boat and its working systems, head on over to our channel and check out our tech talks. We're including more updates of more specific technical things over there. And leave us a comment and ask us a question. We'd be happy to help you out on your journey too. We want to thank our newest patrons for jumping aboard, David, Nancy, and Denise. Thank you. Our most challenging sailing is yet to come around Cape Hatteras, through the Gulf Stream, to the Bahamas. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Until next time.